started good evening yeah good evening to everyone okay well uh, just give us a minute sir just give us a minute so good evening to everybody welcome to the next session of uh, coffee connect and uh, uh, we have mr uh, jimmy george who's a coach and a mentor and comes with a plenty of uh, experience in doing uh, organization transformation personally known to vinod and i did uh, i had an opportunity to speak to him during a tech summit uh, uh, event so with that um, i think we are going to have some more exciting sessions in the next couple of weeks uh, this is going to be packed till we are going to have an agm and i'm sure that this is going to continue the next year also so vinod uh, uh, thanks for organizing this can you quickly introduce the speaker and then we can uh, leave it to you know jimmy to take it forward over to you vinod yeah definitely good afternoon jimmy good afternoon thank you good afternoon yeah it's my pleasure to introduce uh, mr jimmy george uh, so he he is a, a management uh, he has got management degrees both from india and uh, usa he has also he's also certified in several areas he is a certified coach he is a certified nlp practitioner he is also a certified odt consultant he has more than uh, two decades of experience in several corporates uh, in areas of sales sales management product management and for the last two decades he has set up his own institute wherein he offers training coaching development areas and also for uh, organization development transformation and uh, he has also recently authored a book which is in the market which is on how to make your business fail proof and i thought this is all this is what we all want so over to you jimmy and uh, i hope all of you enjoy this session thank you thank you so good evening to all the disadvantage of a webinar is that uh, the speaker is totally in dark has to how the customers are perceiving whether they are listening whether they are there or only the names on the screen so how is it possible at least i don't mind seeing the faces at least you know uh we you know this is it a good idea to see people's face can you hear me yes sir we can hear you yes we can hear you okay yes. okay okay yeah so because a monologue is very difficult for people like us you know people like me particularly yeah that's great okay but the, so but the, whether, the, whether the bandwidth will allow that allow yeah the, that's the issue okay so i that's i, I would i would uh, i would uh, uh, share as ppt it helps to stay on track and uh, that's better i think can you see the slide not now earlier we could okay i don't know what has happened so what slide are you seeing we can see organizational transformation and transformation business and uh, business excellence okay so we have uh, roughly 45 minutes uh, or 15 minutes so uh, let me share the trajectory with you so four points mainly what is organizational transformation and uh, what is uh, happening today in my knowledge i deal with uh, almost all kinds of organizations so in my knowledge what's happening and uh, why is uh, transformation required and what's the way forward what you all as entrepreneurs what you can possibly think of okay now let's start with what is organizational transformation i really i would like to hear from you but i am avoiding the typical uh, interactions etc so let me continue with the uh, kind of a uh, bit of a definition 
Uh, okay. So to put it uh, in a very condensed form, organizational transformation is the intentional change effort to achieve a desired future state. So every organization uh, is a living system. So if you look at organization as a living system, exactly like any other living system, every living system has this uh, ambition or the desire to change, to improve, to improve the quality of its life. So organization being a living system, naturally, every organization desires to achieve a future state of, uh, what are the right words for that? Better profitability, organizational sustainability, freedom to the business owner in terms of uh, managing the day-to-day -day affairs of the organization. And then uh, finally, what I wrote in my book was the last chapter called uh, Creating a Healthy and Happy Organization. So any intentional change efforts, any activity you do to achieve this uh, desired future state can be called organizational transformation. Uh, if I have to quote uh, an authority, he says, uh, a comprehensive and holistic approach to reimagining and reshaping the organization to adopt to new challenges, seize opportunities, and improve overall performance. So you know it well, it's a cliche. I mean, it's much repeated thing, uh, of, often repeated thing is that the world is changing, change is the, is the, uh, what the reality, etc. Particularly your industry, uh, it's uh, pretty boring to say that uh, it is changing very fast. Yes, it's changing every day. So you have new challenges. Uh, you also have uh, new opportunities. So a comprehensive and ho holistic approach to reimagining and reshaping the organization to adopt the new challenges. So in short, uh, when I say organizational transformation, these are some of the key words of conceptual clarity. One of my pet phrases is called conceptual clarity. Those who have conceptual clarity, they are less likely to make mistakes. And those who don't have conceptual clarity, they may experiment and uh, do things as per uh, their understanding and then they can, they may or may not. I'm not uh, judgmental in that, but then conceptual clarity always helps. Now, the key point is uh, transformation is not equal to change. Now, you all know it. Uh, entrepreneurs uh, routinely change few things as a reaction to what is happening to them. We all human beings, we are conditioned, we are engineered, we are programmed. Any living system is uh, engineered or programmed to make a change as per external stimuli. So, for example, a particular uh, customer of yours or a few customers are behaving in a certain way, not ask for your policy, suddenly you change your policy. So react to that particular situation. Or your employees are behaving in certain ways, uh, you react to that, you make changes. So these are all reactive changes and uh, reactive changes are not strategic changes. Okay, sometimes may or may not, but a change has to be strategic. It has to have both short-term and long-term positive impact on your organization. So uh, that's about uh, reactive changes, but then there are incremental uh, changes. Incremental changes is, for example, typically micro small organizations, what they do, is that uh, all our colleagues have got HRMS. So, so far we have been operating HR through Excel sheet and uh, tally. Now let's have an HRMS. So let's say we go for an HRMS. So that's, a, that's an incremental change. Then they hear that uh, all, almost all of their colleagues have a CRM. So let's go for a CRM. So they will have that CRM system. Or oh, we didn't have HR person, now we have an HR person. So my friends are now started training. So let's have training. 
So these are all incremental changes. And I would say 99.99% of the organizations, they make these kinds of incremental changes. Then of course, I don't have to speak about uh, forced uh, changes. Uh, like it happens uh, in the case of uh, all living systems, right? The evolutionary changes, the force changes, or sometimes legal uh, forced, legally forced changes, external changes, for example, uh, or C GST is one and all the related things. So accordingly, we have to change our accounting systems and taxation and things like that. But like this, there are many forced changes uh, in Omni. For example, if you have principles, when they change their policies or when they change uh, their strategies, naturally you are affected. They are the forced changes. And then what I want to take, what we not said about whole system transformation. So transformation is not equal to change or change is different. Uh, change is rather one of the components of a transformation. Ideally, an organization, if they decide to change and uh, if they have the vision to excel, then they have to initiate whole system transformation. If I have to put it uh, uh, in, an, in an analogy, uh, it's like this, that I'm a football player, therefore I focus only on my legs. But that's not right. I'm a volleyball player. Uh, I focus only on my hands uh, because I only have to smash with the balls. It's not right. Or I'm a cricketer, so I have to only focus on my uh, batting or my bowling. No, that's not right. He also has to improve his running and improve all the other mental, physical, and spiritual uh, faculties. So organization as a living system. Organization as a living system, I keep repeating this word, organization as a living system. It has an anatomy, it has got a physiology, it has a morphology, it has a neurology, for example, or the command and communication, uh, what's happening. It has got a psychology, organization has got a personality. So if you really want to change your organization, transform your organization, you have to think about whole system transformation because every function, Every task, every department is interdependent. Nothing is independent. So your uh, sales is dependent on, for example, if it's a manufacturing company, on the products they get. For in your case, for example, the service uh, or supply from your principles. And uh, marketing uh, is uh, dependent on other aspects. So. Uh, HR uh, is uh, dependent on uh, the financial state of the organization and uh, all these things are dependent on the leadership of the organization. So transformation is not equal to change means you have to aim at transforming the organization holistically. That is the message here that transformation is not equal to change. What is happening today? Uh, well, entrepreneurs uh, are attending webinars, conclaves, seminars, etc. Uh, these days, any business seminars, any conclave uh, may have an attendance of a minimum 100 to 1,000 people I see. And I went for some conferences here in the South and also in Mumbai. And these days the number is increasing. So entrepreneurs or business leaders are flocking to seminars, conclaves uh, to get some ideas to change, to improve, to improve the performance of the organization. Then they buy books, they read. I don't know. These days the reading habit has come down, but people are reading books. Then they try to uh, copy success models of uh, other organizations and they read books or they do some courses or they get the ideas from some consultants or somebody. Uh, Blue Ocean model uh, or uh, Blue Ocean strategy or uh, Google's model or Japanese model or Indian model. There are different, different model success models. So let's let me try to copy that. 
then they talk to industry friends uh, what are you doing they also watch who is doing well so they try to copy that and uh, otherwise many entrepreneurs are known to me small medium or uh, micro organizations they try to do their own things and uh, of course they i am not uh, uh, what you would say denigrating their uh, efforts but uh, uh, they get it correct partially sometimes they don't get it but most of them are trying to change themselves by mostly copying others or reading something now if you look at uh, some of the data when i looked at uh, for example this is an authentic study where a person has spoken to uh, 80 plus failed startup projects and he found that 74% reasons 74% reasons, reasons belong to the strategy leadership category 74% so it's again coming to the top strategy leadership culture system processes etc so that's what i'm happening for example the today's fashionable uh, segment called the startup and you know it very well i don't have to repeat that it's well known to you that almost 95% are struggling i am a member of uh, 400 startup entrepreneurs i am in that group just now also i was reading just before this talk uh, that uh, how they are uh, projecting valuations uh, organization that's not making loss that's making loss and they are uh, claiming uh, they have a valuation of 100 crores at a turnover of a 24 crores with loss so these kinds of all games and gimmicks are happening in that segment but the fundamentals are actually wrong so that's where i tell everyone micro small medium all kinds of entrepreneurs clarity is almighty we have to obtain clarity clarity is whatever it may be but whatever wherever we uh, whatever we do in whichever domain we are in we have to achieve this clarity first a lot of entrepreneurs business leaders they believe that passion determination and hard work will give them results so they said that ultimately it comes to passion determination and hard work i addressed a group of mba students in a top business schools other day and also faculty also were sitting there the principal happened to be my friend and almost 90% of them argued with me the students argued with me what uh, on this point that what gives success is passion determination and hard work now i have only one point for them it's not just uh, entrepreneurs even amitabh bachchan needs a passion determination hard work at this age also so virat kohli also needs narendra modi amit shah they have very high passion determination hard work they are working very hard we can see that for their party for their uh, vocation in life for their vision for their mission in life so it's not just for entrepreneurs even for me also as a coach consultant transformation specialist i also have to have tremendous passion for the work i do so it's not just for entrepreneurs in any walk of life you need a passion determination hard work and uh, boys and girls are taught and even many entrepreneurs they believe that if they have passion determination hard work they will become successful in uh, business but that's not reality they definitely need that it's a hygiene factor but that's not going to make you successful in business the second uh, argument i hear is that business is application of common sense so this uh, micro small medium enterprises uh, many of them they believe that uh, these theories uh, transformation system structure processes strategies all these kinds of things you leadership for example or leadership excellence what we talk about it's all for big companies and uh, ultimately business success is application of common sense now what is the reality the reality is that for success in business you need a rare sense that's called business acumen common sense or common man sense common sense will not give you decisive success uh, in business 
business success is you are all successful business people even in your domain you know it will out difficulties you need business acumen and business acumen is a rare sense everybody doesn't have innumerable studies the first research paper i studied done in japan many many years ago the research among entrepreneurs has proven that entrepreneurs are a breed apart that was the title of the research uh, paper entrepreneurs are a breed apart and uh, they have a uh, atypical personality they have what atypical traits and that's what is making them entrepreneurs so it's not uh, common sense so this is another school where people like clarity confusion that business you will become successful if you have got passion determination and hard work and uh, if you apply common sense third uh, well this is all from my consulting experience i am saying this finance can solve most msme problem now yes uh this statement was made by the the person who had some uh indian chamber of uh, small medium enterprises he has got some 500 plus members uh in his uh, association like urai soda so this association on behalf of them uh, he was telling me that the problem with msme is finance now but finance is not the panacea finance is not going to solve all the problems finance will solve the problem after solving problems of strategies structure people and leadership uh i know oh, an organization uh, who is into consumer products last 10 years they have been borrowing every time the managing director of the company tells me i need more money i need more money and i keep telling him no money will not solve your problem there is a blind spot that you are not understanding but i have that freedom to tell him so i tell him on his face i keep telling him money will not solve your problem money will will solve your problem only after correcting the fundamentals the fundamentals are more important like strategies structure people leadership culture system processes etc so that is the third area where we need to acquire clarity uh the fourth area is this small businesses do not require or small businesses cannot afford consultants and coaches yes because the general perception is that uh, consultants and coaches are theoretical consultants and coaches are uh, uh, costly or uh, they uh may not understand my business or uh, i don't require what they can do they 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 in the sense most entrepreneurs uh, uh, they believe that i don't have any problem which where i need consultants or coaches you know the big five you know big fives right mckinsey and uh, all this uh, uh, grand thornton uh, or the eny and stan young and all this big five okay uh big five they don't uh, consult uh, small organizations they consult organizations about 500 crores about 1000 crores or they need a minimum top line so uh, small uh, micro small enterprises need to uh, go for or are rather compelled to go for uh, consultants or uh, small outfits and often yes it's a reality that sometimes you are not getting the kind of results you require one of the reasons is that uh, very few people are doing whole system transformation if you do uh, what i said in the beginning if you just improve your hr some improvement will be there in hr if you do a bit of change in your sales or something if you give a little training to sales people some improvement will be there for some time but these are all reactive improvements or uh, incremental changes if you really want substantial transform transformation in your organization a substantial change in organization you need to go for whole system transformation and let me tell you the small enterprises micro small enterprises they actually need the help of subject matter experts those who can transform the organization they need their help cost is secondary if the entrepreneur understands the value 
the value the external intervention can provide, if they can understand that they are taking the wisest decision in their lifetime. Everybody needs it as a living system. In fact, I have coaches. Everybody needs coach. Every organization needs coach and consultants because another person has a different perspective uh, and the third person can all, or can, is in a better position to see your blind spots and give you the right feedback. Then comes, I hear this also, nano, micro, small enterprises can't afford training, marketing, branding, etc. They can only choose direct selling, word of mouth and networking. Now, in other words, many small organizations uh, are not investing uh, in marketing. And uh, marketing is the engine of uh, business excellence, business growth. And marketing doesn't mean that you need to advertise or you need to spend, uh, employ an ad agency and get into that. Marketing is a vast subject and marketing has uh, many dimensions. Uh, it starts with personal selling, then there is advertising, then there, there is uh, advertising also digital, non-digital, above the line, below, below the line, uh, direct marketing, sales promotion. Uh, and then public relations. There are so many dif different ways of uh, doing marketing. And uh, some kind of, some sort of a marketing is indispensable, absolutely essential for anyone in business. Anyone in business that marketing is essential. So I can go on and on, friends. Uh, so... Knowledge is good to have. We all know this. Sometimes often we feel that I know this, I know this. But knowledge is good to have, but clarity is power. Precise clarity, what is right, what's wrong, and what is a proven uh, reality, and what will give me results, what will give me success, and what won't be effective, what will be ineffective. This understanding, this differentiation is... Uh, it's called the clarity. Now here, friends, now I would like to uh, hear some questions uh, from you. Uh, if you don't mind, because I'm in, the, in a state where I'm continuously talking. So if you have some questions, you can ask me. Or if you tell me, go ahead, I'll go ahead. There is one chat. Who can see uh, everyone? Any message? Upfront payment expectation with no commitment results whatsoever. Micro by cross, I shall be Shiru to everyone. Upfront payment expectation with no commitment results whatsoever. What is this? Can anybody explain this? Yeah, so uh, you had mentioned as to why, uh, you know, in one of your uh, a couple of slides earlier, uh, in yeah. the, why organizations may not consider consultants or coaches or uh, mentors and things like that. Yeah. One of the, one of the experiences that we've had is, uh, uh, you know, lots of, lots of them would make a lot of claims, but would not be able to commit to any results and would expect payments in 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 an upfront manner. So uh, so where is the proof of the pudding? We end up uh, incurring costs, but at the end of the day, there are no results to show for the cost that we uh, invest. So so that's one of the th reasons or one of the things that I thought should be included in those slides. No, no, I agree. I agree. You know, those those are the uh, even so the questions pertaining to that particular point whether you should uh, take the services of a consultant or coach or consulting uh, organization uh certainly i completely agree in my career uh, last 20 years i have been in consulting transforming organizations even currently also i have six or seven clients where i have long term association it depends, it all depends on who are you associating with, what is that person's track record, and how are you fixing the key result areas and the key performance indicators. In other words, 
how clear you are about the performance expectations or deliverables and how will you review how will you measure and how will you reward those uh, deliverables so this clarity must be there is mandatory at the time of uh, contracting at the time of making the contract so if uh, anyone is avoiding this then that person is not a genuine consultant uh, coaching is different consultancy is different training is different so all these things uh, i would say we should not put in the same basket each one is a different uh, intervention with a different level of uh, impact and uh, different uh, deliverables different results here i am talking about uh, consultancy any measurement in this is uh, possible the expectation is on uh, can a consultant work on profit sharing what uh, okay there are so many good questions how do you find uh, upfront how do you find uh, people with the uh, business acumen yes people with the uh, business acumen uh, you make out that uh, on the basis of uh, assessing their competencies okay so every person has got a set of uh, knowledge skills and behavioral traits or attitudes or mindset let's put it that way and uh, every business demands certain key factors of success key competencies so when you observe this in a in an entrepreneur you can say that that person has got business acumen i will just give you a couple of examples every business person is supposed to be on top of the situation every business person every business leader is supposed to be on top of the situation see on top of the situation how do you measure this that you have complete grip of the numbers of your organization financial sales production all kinds of numbers you have complete grip of the processes activities happening in your organization at any given time real time information you have complete the grip of the people and their activities you have got you have complete you are you are on top of the situation this is one of the most important thing to be a successful business uh, person the second uh, competency of a successful business, apart from i am not getting into business leadership that's ability to motivate people manage people make uh, teams etc i am not getting into that i am getting into absolute business acumen many business uh, entrepreneurs they don't have profitability orientation although they are in business they are chasing ideas and sometimes their passion but they need to have uh, i know chartered accountant entrepreneurs uh, they don't track their mis financial mis properly often they get surprises so uh, business acumen is your ability to spot opportunities to make the right business models to get the right people on board again right people you need to have three or four people at the top along with the business uh, leader very loyal to you and ready to work with you and you should you should hold them all successful entrepreneurs have nurtured cultivated built a strong team of three or four people close to them middle level may come and go juniors may come and go all those things will happen but you have a solid team at the top so it's a long topic uh, uh, you can if you want to know you can write to me uh, you can read my book i mentioned uh, i almost two chapters i have uh, uh, spent on this particular uh, thing what percentage of budget should be allocated for sme for coaches consultants and marketing <clears throat> i would say uh these are all conventional uh, ways of uh, planning this do not think in terms of percentages etc you identify the need identify the need the need you identify is uh, which i am coming to that it later but the simple equation is expected performance minus actual performance you will find uh, in people in your organization this ep minus ap so what you are expecting what what are the expectations uh, from your organization from the people from your managers from your sales team from your service team expected performance and you see an actual performance and there is a gap 
when you analyze this ep minus ap you will find a couple of reasons and most you will find uh, there is a lack of knowledge skills or uh, attitudes in some other people or you will find that okay there that there, there is there is no deficit of knowledge skills or motivation but there is a deficit of uh, maybe right strategies there is a deficit of for example right leadership the leadership is not there or there is a deficit of maybe adequate resources or deficit of for example a, a a right culture so some organizations for example there is a negative culture and because of that even positive people cannot perform or there could be external factors uh, market factors or customer factors uncontrollable factors so when you analyze ep minus ap expected performance minus actual performance continuously you will find you will identify performance gaps pg and depending on the performance uh, depending on the nature of the performance gap you should take the decision uh, to employ the uh, right remedial action or remedial measure so in that training could be one of them if it is a gap of knowledge skills attitudes capability competence etc and if an external person is needed to bridge that gap then employ a person uh if it is regarding strategy then you have a brainstorming session you take somebody a subject matter expert and rectify the strategy if it is resources then you have to solve it if it is system you have to solve it there is an issue of culture and uh, you are not able to solve it then you need to get someone like me for a whole system transformation you fix the behaviors of people through a strategy of outside inside and inside outside process so you should you need not allot any kind of start by a percentage budget you need to first identify ep minus uh, ap expected performance minus actual performance and when you think from a futuristic angle it will become expected competencies minus existing competencies so you will find a competency gap so you need to go for a coaching of those uh, identified high potential employees so it's all uh, uh, based uh, on the need identified and the specific remedial measures you need to select to bridge those gaps i would say not to think in terms of any person because you don't have to do anything routinely you should have to do routinely training routinely no it is all need specific ep minus ap to begin with then there are so many other gaps also can a consultant work on profit sharing uh, certainly if the consultant is uh, uh, hired for improving the profit if the consultant who is absolutely on uh, strategy on sales on pricing in in that area and if that uh, consultant uh, is the consultant's deliverable is improving profit then the contracting should be on profit sharing but so if you uh, hire a consultant for uh, improving the communication skills of the people of your people then that concept, uh, the consultant's uh, performance is based on a pre Uh, engagement assessment and a post engagement assessment so before the consultant's engagement the level of communication the quality of communication the effectiveness of communication and post engagement what's the difference it all depends on so everybody cannot be every consultant cannot be tied on a profit sharing it depends on the specific uh, uh, deliverable specific contracting contract terms or uh, with the consultant the expectations on gross margin is not net unfortunately uh well i bit let's not attend that now i already partially answered that any measurement in this is possible i already answered it transformation involves a change management and change resistance so at what stage should you involve the team members or uh, senior members absolutely so there will be resistance uh, there will be issues of uh, change management and uh, ideal transformation is a top down and bottom up approach okay so it has to merge at the center bottom up means you will start certain uh, small training sessions small sensitization program engagement programs at the bottom but the 
big change of uh, culture, uh, leadership, strategy, system, process, etc. that starts from the top. There will be a 20% resistance as usual. You will find the bell curve. 20% people will be highly supportive. 60% will be sitting on the fence and watching which side the wind is going. And 20% people may resist. And there are strategies to manage the resistance. But uh, if the business owner has decided, has, is determined to transform the organization, Certainly, it's possible. I am saying this not from any book or reading any articles. From my experience, I am saying I had the opportunity to deal with uh, organizations with 10,000 employees and also 10 employees. So currently, also I am doing it. So it's it's part of the game. But at what stage should you involve the team members or senior members? Senior members are involved right from the beginning. And below are in also everybody is involved right from the beginning, but uh, there are different uh, interventions and different uh, engagements uh, for them because it's a, both a top down and bottom up approach. Only going for top down approach may not help, then you will have more resistance. Bottom up approach uh, uh, will create confusion. So you have to have both together. Thank you very much. Good question. So I'll move forward. So what makes entrepreneurs successful at their fundamental level? Partly you can uh, get some of the answers here. How many of you have heard about this? Uh, these two words, fixed mind, mindset versus growth mindset. This, uh, you can uh, put that in your chat. This uh, Carol Dweck is the person uh, who, a lady who wrote this beautiful book ever since that uh, the, uh, the concept of uh, mindset became very, popular. So she has spoken about two mindsets and I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an ardent, ardent supporter, believer, follower of this uh, concept. People, whether it is, uh, whether an entrepreneur or a doctor or a sports person or anybody for that matter, even a student or even a homemaker, housewife, people with a fixed mindset, uh, they will only have arguments. They believe that uh, things can happen only the way they think. That they are already they are qualified, learned, intelligent people, and they are already fixed. This is how things work. And uh, for them, failure is uh, not something that can be corrected. Uh, it is that is how it's it's done. Whereas people with a growth mindset. They are learners. They are open to new ideas. They sometimes take risks. They make mistakes. They learn from mistakes. They move ahead. And they are open to they are they are open to learning. They are open to uh, accepting ideas. They are open to experimentation, etc. And entrepreneurs uh, or any people in any walk of life, those who have succeeded, they have this growth mindset. So Carol Dweck says about it the what is needed is these three things, what I have seen with the successful entrepreneurs. One is this energy, the mental and physical energy. Uh, this energy is what is driving them, uh, the ability to, to remain self-motivated, to motivate others, to work long hours, uh, mental and physical freshness. And second is, of course, it's about the attitude, the mindset. And the third is a team, which is they are able to develop build a good team, particularly at the top. So before everything, if you want to be a successful entrepreneur, my discovery of 40 years, seeing all kinds of entrepreneurs, India, some of the top, I had the opportunity to work with. And even now I'm working with some budding entrepreneurs, all of them. I tell them this, first you get these three things. These are the three basic, essential, indispensable factors. You need to have the mental and the physical energy you need to have a growth mindset and then you should have a solid team at the top, people who stay with you and people who are ready to be with you in both success and failure. Then other factors, we know marketing acumen, financial acumen, people skills, decision-making skills, industry insights, and futuristic insights. So what is the success model? The success model is universal success model is this. Uh, 
leadership excellence, driving product excellence, operational excellence, and marketing excellence, resulting in the financial excellence and business sustainability. So if you look at any organization in manufacturing, uh, marketing, or in other sector, you can just replace the word product excellence maybe with service excellence or uh, here, or they may still have operational excellence, for example, a courier company. But, but in your case, since you are into IT, uh, product services, and uh, marketing, so your leadership excellence, driving product excellence, service excellence, and marketing excellence resulting in the financial excellence and business sustainability. That's the model for you. So what I'm trying to tell you is that the transformation all starts with the leadership excellence. And traditionally, when you make organization this fashion, you fall into an activity trap, the small company trap called or the entrepreneur is into every area. So you are the seller, uh, you are the CRM manager, you are the finance side, you are the admin manager, you are the HR manager, you have to interview people, you are always in meeting, 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 meeting. What you can read this word called activity trap. You are always in an activity trap. So entrepreneurs, micro, small, medium entrepreneurs, they fall into activity trap and then you won't get the business model correct. So leadership excellence, you have to make these enablers perfect. These are called enablers. You give the right direction to the people. You have the strategies in place. You are managing a working capital well. You have the right people and the culture you have created. And once you have done this, your energy should be spent on the engines of excellence. For example, if you are in a service, service excellence, marketing excellence, and product excellence if you are a product manufacturer. So change process starts. How can you fulfill your dreams? You have to start this. These three questions you need to ask. Where are you now? Where can you go? And where do you really want to go? So to fulfill your dream, these three, three critical questions today, if you ask, and uh, if you get into that process of uh, finding the way forward, how? You, I am here. After all, transformation is all about the, the, the effort you put to reach your desired state, future state, which is a better state. So where do you want to go? You fix the goals. And there's this potential. Where can you go? That is your potential. But leave the potential. At the moment, you fix a goal for you, both qualitative and quantitative goals. Most of the time, we fix quantitative goals. And I want to become a 100 crore company. I want to become a 500 crore company. I want to do X. It's not just that. If you just use the quantitative goal, you will make a mistake. You have to have both quantitative and qualitative goal in terms of system, processes, strategies, culture, service excellence, HR excellence, people competence, etc. When you have both qualitative and quantitative goal, you will have the work hope. I asked this question, why was Indian football team not in the World Cup contest in my seminars, I ask. The simple answer is this. People give all kinds of answers that uh, they lack the motivation. Uh, sorry, uh, they don't have the skill. They don't have the energy. India has not done this. India does politics, etc. But the real thing is they did not work for it. How many Indian brands are there? I'm not getting it's a video. How many Indian brands are there in the top global trend? None. There is not even a single brand in the top Indian brand, the top 100. Often we say that India is great, etc. Big power, etc. But in many basic areas, we are not in the even the top 100. Why? The reason is very simple. We did not work for it. None of these companies work for it. If we take companies just in the top companies, one company, last, last figure, Reliance, at the 54th position, no other companies are in the top 100 in the world. There are the many Chinese, Japanese, and American companies. So transformation happens, friends, when you focus on the invisible and the immeasurable area. Mostly uh, entrepreneurs or we, I am not saying no, entrepreneurs alone, uh, people in business, our uh, focus, attention, energy is on money, funds, sales, profit, assets, production, inventory, WOP, people, infrastructure, all visible and tangible areas. But this Transformation of this visible and uh, 
measurable, tangible, visible and measurable area. This will happen only when you spend your time, your transformation happens in the invisible and the immeasurable area. That is your people's product knowledge, market knowledge, competitors knowledge, their sales knowledge, their service knowledge, their domain knowledge, and the skills, all that their performance efficiency. Then the visible and the immeasurable, energy, passion, behavior, communication skills, soft skills, all the soft skills required. And finally, as at the top level, you as an entrepreneur, your beliefs, your thoughts, your ideas and strategies. This is, and if these things are correct, that is where entrepreneurs need a coach. Entrepreneurs need a top coaches is because they have a lot of blind spots here. This is where uh, open one-to-one -one conversations uh, after pro-processment that helps entrepreneurs to set this invisible and immeasurable area. And once this is correct, automatically the visible and the immeasurable will come. Okay. So, uh, therefore, I would say, uh, for example, if you look at them, they all have a lot of coaches and trainers. So, for every entrepreneur needs a mentor, coach, consultant. Uh, and for that, you achieve this uh, business excellence. Your brand, for example, ultimate success is that your company's brand, your organization's brand becomes the leadership. You don't have to. Today, Apple is still number one. Steve Jobs, done and gone, but still uh, organizations doing well, still the number one brand, even after so many years, because they have built such a brand. That brand has got so much of pull in the market. So eventually your brand should replace you. And when your presence is not required, you take your organization to that sort of a level. In short, when you continue to do whatever you did in the past, you will continue to get whatever results you got in the past in a diminishing manner. So this is a key point. Uh, you need change because we feel that often we make this mistake. We keep doing the same thing again and again. Uh, we work harder. We spend more time but we won't get a different results. So do you want to build a successful business? You want to scale up and grow 10x or 20x? You want to manage your business through a team without your hands-on micromanagement? You want to build a brand that can fetch you billions in valuation? That's very important. And uh, you, you want to your business dreams fulfill. Take no action, be the same. Take a leap of faith and take action. Get today what you always wanted, the right guidance, the right strategy, the right tools, and the right techniques. So thank you very much, uh, friends. Uh, I conclude here, I know, in 15 minutes. I had to go a bit fast, but the key message, key message uh, is here is that uh, when you transform your organization in a scientific and systematic way, you will certainly achieve business excellence. And But you have to do it through the right people. You need to make the right assessment before taking that decision. You should uh, get all the questions uh, cleared, the doubts what you have. And then it will work. If you shoot in the dark or if you just copy what others have done, just do some uh, sporadic one-day training, two-day training, and expect a miracle, it, it won't happen. It won't happen. Uh, that's where I can give you clarity. Please don't do that also. They say uh, even we work hard and company does well, entrepreneurs would show more expense to show less net profit. Hence, they want gross margin. Mr. Mehta, can you clarify this? They say means whom you are talking about, consultants. Uh, can you come uh, yes, live, yes, Mr. Mehta? Yes. yes, Mr. yes. Mehta? Yeah. I was replying to Mr. Ashok's uh, message where he says the ah. expectation is on gross margin, not net margin from coaches. So I was replying to his question. I replied. Achha, achha. Okay. That means okay. The consultants say that we will measure our work based on the gross profit, the increase in gross profit rather than net profit 
So I was okay. coming to Ashok Sam. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Now it all it all depends on uh, how you enter into the negotiation. So how, I will put it very simple: how you negotiate and how you fix the deliverables, and what exactly is the purpose of the consultant? Why is he hired? Uh, there are all kinds of consultants. So what's the purpose? And then comes all these questions. I'm a whole system transformation consultant. What we do is that we uh, first diagnose what are the strengths, what are the areas of improvement, where, what are the areas of uh, blindness, which the organization is supposed to do, but they're not doing. We diagnose these areas and we make a, a transformation plan. Uh, mostly we find in organization there could be a knowledge gaps. There could be knowledge gaps in many areas. For example, standard operating procedures. There could be skill gaps. There could be gaps of strategy. And once you bridge these things and once you uh, put the right system processes in place, and also change the uh, thought process at the top. That's very important. Building the, uh, so changing the thought processes of the senior leadership entrepreneurs. You will find that performance uh, is improving. You'll, you, you yourself, you don't have to measure it. You will see that the performance is uh, improving. It's growing. I'll just give you a small example and close this session. Uh, a company that was into uh, what's called uh, selling frozen products and both the live and frozen products uh, uh, in Mangalore. They have been making laws for the last 10 years. Father and two sons. One is an engineer, the other one is qualified. Both, both are qualified, intelligent people. And uh, they have been stuck at 20 to 24 crores, two crores average sales per month and making laws and borrowing money, getting more investors to give them money, etc. So I happened to meet uh, this uh, family in a, in a seminar. I was doing a public seminar and they were participating, one of the uh, sons. And he contacted me and uh, I got associated with them. There was no commitment of improving their gross profit, et cetera, et cetera. But they were interested in transformation. So when I analyzed uh, the organization, when I diagnosed the organization, I found that there were gaps in all the areas. So what I did for the organization, I uh, trifurcated the entire organization to three areas, inbound process, in-house process, and outbound processes. I gave them clarity. So I showed them all the gaps in the inbound processes. I showed them gaps in the in-house processes and outbound process, particularly billing, uh, sales, uh, marketing, customer, uh, uh, this uh, market expansion, service, etc. all the outbound processes. They had all kinds of gaps, right? People are not there, right? Systems are not there, right? Tools are not there. But they were thinking they had all these things. They made a lot of investments. And I'm not trying to tell you to impress this. I corrected this. And the third month, they have made profit, operating profit. And they are doing extremely well. This year, we set a target of 30 crores and they are on the right track. And uh, I'm continuing guiding them. Uh, and they are doing well. What I needed was, what I was uh, uh, expected to do was uh, a transformation. And within three months, the organization uh, got transformed. And they are so confident. There is now a positive feeling among the entrepreneurs. The 76-year-old father keep, uh, calls me and talks to me, expressing his gratitude uh, that we needed somebody like you 10 years back. We didn't have you 10 years back, and now we are realizing what mistakes we made. So transformation happens like this. It's very difficult to specify, uh, uh, or it's, 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 it's not right to generalize it. It is very organization specific, and uh, every organization like a, like a human being is unique, has got a unique personality, a unique culture. And uh, only those who understand this, uh, those who have experienced this can really get into that and help entrepreneurs. Thanks, friends. Any more questions? Thank you, Vinod. I think, uh, yeah, answering the time and I uh, think uh, uh, 
I think we will probably take the questions later on the mail. So, fine. All right, sir. Welcome. So, my number I can give you here. You can contact me 9820042692. This is my number. You can WhatsApp me, product to send mail. So you're welcome. I am not a coach or a consultant who looks at the watch or the invoice. I am I'm passionate about helping entrepreneurs transform. We know knows about it. Uh, and uh, or those who are associated with me. Is there any model that measures organization's uh, maturity? Yeah, we can discuss that. We can discuss that uh, one to one. It's possible. So I think uh, that will bring the end of uh, our session. I thank you, you know, for doing a, such a wonderful session and sparing your time for ISO audience. It's been a you know good enlightening session on from our different perspectives. I think we are all uh, going around on a small and medium companies and trying to see how we can actually look at scaling this to a next level. Certainly, some insights have come in, and thank you so much for it. And uh, I'm sure that we will come back to you for more things in the future. So thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Vinod. Thank you all. Thank you, Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you.